All right, so tell us about yourself. My name is Kimma. I'm 21 years old. I seen Dennis, and I'm a painter and artist, amongst other things. How long have you been painting? I've been painting for about a year or two now, but I just started using oil, like, last semester. Um, so, where did you grow up? I grew up in Ghana. I was raised in Ghana, born in Ivory Coast. I was, I'm a war child, so it's like, I move around a lot. And then we came to America when I was like seven and lived in Jersey ever since then. So, when did you realize that painting and art was your passion? Um, I didn't realize I knew how to draw in middle school, but I really didn't like it like that. It was just like a hobby. And then I wanted to be a veterinarian, but I can't tolerate blood. So my art teacher in high school forced me to be an artist. You said she forced you? He forced me. And my mentor too. How did that work out? Right. <laughs> he was like, oh, you should go for art, mad money in the field, and I'll give you $20 if you do it. And I did it. So I got the $20. So you just stuck with I got art? Bribed, yeah. So you got bribed to do art? I liked it. I just didn't know if their money was in the field. I didn't know if it was like a career that I could chase because it is very competitive. Mm -hmm. But he said I had talent and he had twenty dollars, so I don't see why not. So, um, tell me about like your area of study and like why you're going to school. Um, my area of study is fine arts major with a minor in history of art. And uh, I'm trying to see if I should do graphic design too, but maybe not. And I tend to pursue my, I want to pursue my PhD in art mm -hmm. and become an art director and an art professor. And that's basically my career goal. Right so you're comfortable, you think you would be comfortable with teaching people how to do what you do? Um, yes. I. I am pretty comfortable with it. That's my job now. I work as an art instructor in the studio. So how does this satisfy you, painting? It's very common. It's like therapeutic and like hella stressful, but the stress is worth it because you're doing what you love at the end of the day. And you get to paint about what you want to paint about. My professor doesn't really force you to do a certain thing in. She just lets you paint what you feel like you feel like I noticed that a lot of your art is very centered towards something, there's a theme. Would you like to elaborate on it a little bit? Of course. So this semester we're working on any series of paintings we want to work on. Last semester I did one on my identity and what it was, what it feels like to be an African female in a African American society and white society. And this semester, with all the gun violence going around and all of the Black Lives Matter and police brutality, it's been bothering me lately. So this is basically my way of protesting against it. Mm -hmm. It's my goal to get more buzz on these paintings because they really do matter. Like, they'll be in the news, oh, this person got shot, and pay attention, we'll pay attention to it like for a week or two, and then you don't really think about it no more. The funny thing is, too, is not a lot of people know about it. And now, yes, so it's like my way of protesting, my way of getting it out there and keeping it relevant because it still is relevant. These lives still do matter. How much time do you spend in the studio in a typical day? <laughs> I live here. Do you literally live here? I seriously spend like, I can spend three days straight here in the studio just painting and other things but basically i live here until the semester is over my little bed over there some food we're not supposed to have food in here but like i said this is my home you're comfortable with that the door have a passcode so i feel pretty safe and it's not only me it's like my classmates also here deadlines are coming up so we have to hustle So, tell me about how you display your work, like where you go to show people and things like that. Because I'm sure you don't keep it to yourself. 
I'm very selfish. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. It's like, I'm just joking. Um, most of my works get shown in my house. I invite people over. And there's a gallery where, like outside of the studio we would show our work. This work that I'm working on, I feel like it's way too important to have a little crowd. So the interesting thing about that is I plan on having a bigger show. Like the person who inspired me to do this um, piece, he works at a BT, Dr. Lamont Hill. And I'm gonna tag him in one of the paintings and see if he could get on BT. And I'm also gonna talk, tag Donald Trump, <laughs> the one that I did of him. And see how he responds to this because he likes to sort of beef we could start one together you think you would get a response from donald trump huh do you think you would get a response from donald it's very trump? easy to get a response out of him that's the sad part he's on twitter a lot i don't even have a twitter but i'm going to create one just to get on his nerves after this is over so i think the painting stuff is really cool because like the creative expression part is interesting to me. So I guess what I want to know is um, how you keep your inspiration other than, like you mentioned, how like the events, the social issues that go on in the world and about how you enjoy painting, how it's like relieving for you. Um, so what keeps you going? What keeps me going is these pulled swords that keep on dying. Like I don't understand why so much lives have to be lost for no reason so that's really what keeps me going like every time i read about a new person dying over stupidity it's like why and painting about it like i would cry about it but then painting about it makes me feel like i'm doing something about it and just not crying about it or talking about it it's and, an outlet yeah it's an outlet in a way it's like immortalizing the people who died because yeah they're on news for five seconds an hour but then after that who's really going to keep on replaying the video